Hello, everyone. Hi, Mohina. Hi, Ritu. How are you all? Excited for today's lecture? Good afternoon, Bita. Okay, so today we are going to discuss photosynthesis in higher plants. Okay, so can anyone tell me what do you mean by photosynthesis? Quickly, what do you mean by photosynthesis? Very good, Chichuni. Preparation of food by plants from solar energy. So, photosynthesis beta is a physiochemical process. Is a physiochemical process. Why it is a physiochemical? Because the physical energy, the energy from the sunlight, that physical energy is converted into the high energy chemical intermediates like ATP, NADPH, which are the products of the light reaction. And these high energy intermediates are utilized in the dark reaction for the synthesis of carbohydrate. Okay. So that is why it is a physiochemical process. Remember this term. So there are some experiments regarding photosynthesis. Fourth experiment was done by Joseph Priestley. They discover oxygen. Okay, what he did, he took the bell. We also call it as bell jar experiment. He took this jar and he put a burning candle and the mouse in it. After some time, he observed that the mouse died and the candle extinguished. Why? Because all the oxygen present in the jar is occupied, is utilized. Okay? It utilized by this burning candle and the mouse. Because of the suffocation later, the mouse died. But when he put the mint plant in the jar, he observed that the air which was damaged by the breathing by the uh, burning candle and the mouse is restored by this mint plant. Okay, so he proposed the hypothesis that the plant restored the air, whatever the breathing animals and the burning candle remove. Very important, remember this point. Okay, remember this hypothesis. Next experiment was done by Ingenhaus. Ingenhaus, he, what he did, he used the similar setup of the Joseph Pistley and he put it in the dark and the light. Okay. And he observed that the sunlight is essential to the plant and it somehow purifies the air. The process purifies the air which is damaged by the burning candle or the breathing animal. So he shows that uh, light is essential. Remember, Second, what he did, he took the aquatic plant and he observed that the bubbles are coming out from the region or the green parts of the plant. And he later called that these bubbles are of oxygen. And he proposed this, that only the green parts of the plant release oxygen. Very important. I'm marking the important point. Sometimes you get might get a question in one column they will give you the name of the scientist in second column they can give you the their respective discoveries and they can ask you for the mismatch or they can ask you correct the matching up okay 
Next one is the Julius von Sack. He provided the evidence for production of glucose when the plants grow. So basically, he proposed that the green parts of the plant, they produce glucose and these glucose are stored in the starch. So the synthesized sugar is glucose, translocating sugar is sucrose and the storage sugar is starch. Remember this, plant synthesized sugar is glucose. Translocating, kis, mein trans, kis form mein translocate ho hai wo? Floya, sucrose, sorry, sucrose and the storage is starch. And he also proposed the green substance in the plants. These, there are some green substance and these green substance, they are stored in a specialized or located in a specialized body within the plant. But we later find, it, find out that these green substances are chlorophyll and those special bodies are chloroplast. Okay. And this I already told you that he found that green, green plants, green parts of the plants where the glucose is made and the glucose is usually stored as starch. Next one is the T.W. Engelman, very important. He proposed the first action spectrum of photosynthesis was discovered. What he did, beta, he took a prism and he passed this light. Once the light passed through the prism, it splits into the spectrum. You get the spectrum of light. The light of different wavelengths will come out. And he used the green algae, which is cladophora. So he put the green algae cladophora in the suspension medium, which consists of aerobatic bacteria. Okay? He took the cladophora green algae, he put the green algae in the suspension of aerobic bacteria. And the aerobic bacteria, they require oxygen, right? So all the aerobic bacteria, they get, get accumulated in the region where the rate of photosynthesis is high. Because when the photosynthesis will take place, oxygen will be released and this oxygen will be utilized by these aerobic bacteria. So all the aerobic bacteria, they get accumulated in the region where the rate of photosynthesis is high, where the oxygen uh, is more. Okay. And what we observe that the bacteria accumulated in the region of blue and the red light of spectrum. Blue and the red light of spectrum. So according to him, he observed the first action spectrum of photosynthesis. Next one is a conius van neen. What he proposed beta that in green plants, water is the hydrogen donor and is oxidized to O2. So in green plants, the O2 which is coming out as the end product is coming from by the splitting of water. When the water split, the oxygen is re released. Okay. So oxygen is coming from the water, not from carbon dioxide. Remember this point, very important point that oxygen comes from the water. And in purple and green sulfur bacteria, the hydrogen donor is not water. The hydrogen donor is hydrogen sulfide. H2S and the oxidation product is sulfur or sulfate because oxygen is not evolving there, right? The end, the oxidation product is sulfur or sulfate. That is why we also call it as an oxygenic photosynthesis. In oxygenic photosynthesis, oxygen is evolving, okay? And H2O, water is the hydrogen donor. But in an oxygenic photosynthesis, H2S is the hydrogen donor and oxygen is not evolving. Remember this. And he inferred that the O2 evolved by the green plants come from the water and not from the carbon dioxide. Very important point. Remember this better. Next, we are going to discuss the light reaction and the dark reaction. So photosynthesis is consists of light reaction and the dark reaction. Light reaction is a further of two types. 
One is cyclic photophosphorylation. And another one is non-cyclic. Okay. And light reaction, it takes place in the membrane of thylakoid or grana. Whereas dark reaction, it takes place in the stroma. Remember these points. These are very important. Okay. And in light reaction, what happens? They trap all the light energy. Because the pigment molecules, they are present in the thylakoid membrane, right? And these pigment molecules, they trap the light energy, right? They trap the light energy and they convert this light energy into the high energy chemical intermediates, which are ATP and NADPH. And these products of the light reaction are later utilized in the dark reaction, which is taking place in the stroma where the synthesis of sugar takes place, where the synthesis of carbohydrate takes place. Okay. And the most important organelle, which is? And the most important organelle is chloroplast, which is involved in this process. And when I taught you a uh, cell, the unit of life, I already told you that chloroplast is a double membrane structure. It has outer membrane and the inner membrane, right? And this fluid material is known as stroma. There's a stack, thylakoid has a stack, membrane-like structure, and the stack of thylakoid is known as granum. Singular is granum and plural is grana. And these different granum, they are connected with the membranous tubule, which is stroma lamellae. You can see these? These are connecting the two granum. These are the stroma lamellae. Okay? Moving next are the pigment molecules which are present in a thylakoid membrane. The chlorophyll A. Majorly, we are going to discuss the four pigment molecules. One number one is chlorophyll A, number two is chlorophyll B, number three is xanthophyll, and the fourth is carotenoid. So chlorophyll A is the chief pigment molecule. We also call it as primary pigment molecule. We also call it as universal pigment molecule. Remember all these points because chlorophyll A forms the reaction center. This is the molecule which is responsible for the reaction center. Chlorophyll B, xanthophyll and carotenoids, these are accessory pigments. So what is the role of accessory pigment? Number one is the allow a wider range of wavelength of light to be absorbed. Second, they prevent the photooxidation of the chlorophyll A because if a very high intensity of light will flow, will fall on the chlorophyll A, which is the reaction center, it will lead to the photooxidation. So to prevent the photooxidation of chlorophyll A, there are some accessory pigments so that the direct light cannot fall on the reaction center. And this graph, it shows you the absorption spectrum. You can see on the y-axis, there's the amount of light absorbed. And on the x-axis, there's a wavelength of light is given. Okay. This is a carotenoid. This graph is showing at which wavelength, which pigment molecule absorbed, which wavelength of light. Moving next is the right reaction. Light reaction, we also call it as photochemical phase. Photo, why? Because it is taking place in the light, right? Remember, photo always means light. Chemical, because chemical intermediates are going to fo form in this reaction. There's a term called light harvesting complex. Light harvesting complex, because it is made up of hundreds of pigment molecules which are bound to the protein. This is a light harvesting complex.
and in the reaction center there is a single chlorophyll a single molecule of chlorophyll a is present in the reaction center if the chlorophyll a have a absorption maxima at 700 nanometer then it forms a photosystem 1 if it has an absorption maxima at 680 nanometer then it is photosystem 2 remember this beta very important you can learn it like this 700 okay it is a student which scored the highest marks so highest marks is 700 so it, that student will be first right the student who scored 680 marks that is a second highest so second second is there okay you can remember like this and there's a one more point which i have to tell you these are the pigment molecules right reaction center is here so these are the accessory pigment molecules what happen when the photon or the light fall the electron in this pigment they get excited okay they move to a high energy state but when this electron return back to its ground state there's a release of energy right you must have read this in chemistry there's a release of energy this energy is transferred to the adjacent molecule again the same process will happen now the electron of this pigment molecule will get excited right suppose this is a pigment molecule photon fall or light electron get excited when the electron return to its ground state the energy is released this energy is transferred to the pigment molecule again the electron get excited then when the electron return to its ground state again there is a release of energy this release of this energy is transferred to the other molecule this is how the energy is transferred and finally reaches to the reaction center we call it as resonance energy transfer okay moving next is the non cyclic photophosphorylation i told you light reaction is of light reaction consists of two one is cyclic and the other one is non cyclic photophosphorylation photo means light phosphorylation is atp and non cyclic for example if the electron is moved from a to b it is not coming back to a so the electron if one transfer from a to b it is not coming back to a that means it is non cyclic and light and photophosphorylation that is the the formation of atp in the presence of light that is why we call it as photophosphorylation this i'm going to discuss in detail then it will make then you will understand it more better first important point which you have to keep in mind and very very important that in non cyclic photophosphorylation both photosystem 2 and photosystem 1 are involved okay both photosystem 2 and photosystem 1 are involved this is a photosystem 2 okay so when the photon falls in this photosystem 2 the electron get excited the electron will move to a excited state high energy state and it will be received by the primary electron acceptor which is pheophytin remember these acceptors name okay so when the photon when the electron get excited from photosystem 2 it is received by pheophytin which is a primary electron acceptor from the pheophytin the electron will be transferred to plastoquinone from the plastoquinone it will transfer to cytochrome b6f from cytochrome b6f it will go to plastocyanin okay from plastocyanin it will go to photosystem 1 okay so the movement of electron is downhill it is moving down and these electron carriers they are arranged in the increasing order of their redox potential okay remember this point now once the electron is received by the photosystem 1 then the electron in the photosystem 1 get excited 
this electron will receive by the primary acceptor which is iron sulfur from this iron sulfur the electron will be accepted by ferrodoxin ferrodoxin when it receive the electron it will transfer the electron the electron will be utilized by nfr which is a ferrodoxin nadp reductase and this is the enzyme which is responsible for the reduction of nadp so nadp will be re reduced to nadph so in non cyclic photophosphorylation we observe two things number one is the nadph number two is the atp and atp formation always require a proton gradient always remember this protein always remember this point beta that atp formation requires a proton gradient and how this proton gradient established i will tell you when i will discuss the chemi osmotic hypothesis okay and one more important point beta that is the splitting of water in non cyclic photophosphorylation you observe the splitting of water and the splitting of water is also accompanied by a oxygen evolving complex because oxygen is evolving when the water split oxygen is evolved that is why we also called that non non cyclic photophosphorylation oxygen is evolved atp is formed and nadph is formed okay and very very important point many times the question came from this point that the oxygen evolving complex is consist of manganese chlorine calcium and bicarbonate ion remember these elements beta it's very important many times this question came in neat remember this point and non cyclic photophosphorylation we also call it as z scheme why see electron movement first this then it downhill then again this so we are obtaining a z like this we are obtaining a z scheme okay and why we are obtaining the z scheme because these electron carriers they are arranged in a increasing of the order of their redox potential like the electron will move from this point from the photosystem 2 will receive by pheophytin then it moving the plastoquinone then it will be received by cytochrome b6f then it will be received by cytoplastin then it will be reached to photosystem 1 so all the electron carrier they are arranged in the increasing order of their redox potential and redox potential is the tendency to gain the electron i hope it is clear it's very important remember this point okay next come is a cyclic photophosphorylation term cyclic for example from a the electron get excited and move to b then again it is coming back to a okay so it is a cyclic photophosphorylation atp is also going to form in this process because photo means light and phosphorylation means atp that is the formation of atp in the presence of light but in non cyclic photophosphorylation both the system photosystem 1 and photosystem 2 both are involved but in cyclic photophosphorylation only photosystem 1 is involved remember this point only photosystem 1 is involved okay and p when the light is beyond 680 nanometer because it has a maximum absorption at 700 nanometer right so when the light is beyond 680 nanometer or equal to 700 falls on the photosystem 1 the electron of photosystem get excited and it will receive by the primary acceptor which is iron sulfur protein from the primary acceptor it will move to ferrodexin from the ferrodexin it will move to cytochrome b6f complex and from the cytochrome b6f complex it will move to plastocyanin and from the plastocyanin back to p700 that is why it is cyclic because the electron from the p700 is received by the primary acceptor then it is again coming back to photosystem 1 okay and in this process only atp is formed 
only ATP. Remember this point. Because the electron is after passing to plastocyanin, the electron is coming back to P700. Okay. There's no FNR in this case. So there would be a no reduction of NADPH. There's no reduction of NADP. Okay. So in this process, in cyclic photophosphorylation, only ATP is formed. Remember this point, but it's very important. And there's a one point which I have to tell you regarding non-cyclic photophosphorylation is this, that when the photon falls on P680 nanometer, which is photosystem 2, the electron get excited. Now this P680 or photosystem 2 is deficient of electron, right? It's deficient because it's electron get excited and it is received by the primary acceptor, which is PO5. Now this photosystem 2 is deficient of electron. So how is now this photosystem 2 will get the electron or how its deficiency will be compensated? Its deficiency will be compensated by the splitting of water because when the water split, oxygen is evolved and four electrons are generated. These electrons will be transferred to photosystem 2. Okay? Remember this point. It's very important. And also one more point. These four electrons, they are not transferring just one go. They are transferred one at a time. Okay? That is why oxygen evolving complex, they play a very important role. Here, okay. Now moving. Next is chemi osmotic hypothesis. I told you that ATP synthesis. Okay. So this hypothesis explain the ATP synthesis. First thing for the ATP synthesis is the proton gradient. I told you. So the proton accumulation occur in the lumen of thylakoid, and there are four points why these. Basically, there are three, three points why these uh, proton get accumulated in lumen of thylakoid. Number one is the splitting of water. Splitting of water is taking place in the lumen of thylakoid, right? Photosystem 2 is involved. So when the water split, oxygen is evolved and the oxygen will diffuse out. But protons, they remain in the lumen of the thylakoid. Second is... When the electron is transferred from the photosystem 2 to pheophytin, pheophytin transfer the electron to plastoquinone. Okay. So plastoquinone, when transferred the electron to cytochrome B6F, it transferred the proton from the stroma into the lumen of the thylakoid. You can see this. This proton. This proton are transferred from the stroma into the lumen of the thylakoid. This is the second point where why the accumulation of proton is increasing or taking place in the lumen of thylakoid. Number third says, so in number third, you can see FNR. FNR is located outside towards the stroma, okay? And the NADP is reduced to NADPH. So this proton which is required for the reduction of NADP is taken from the stroma. Remember this point beta. Okay, is it taking from the stroma? Now the stroma, the proton ions in the stroma are decreasing in concentration. And the, pro and the concentration of proton ions in the lumen of thylakoid is increasing. So there's a gradient established across the thylakoid membrane. And this gradient is very important for the synthesis of ATP. Why? Let me tell you. Establish. Now this pro all the protons, they start moving towards this trans CF0 transmembrane channel okay so when the proton move through this transmembrane channel the proton gradient break right proton gradient will break and it will lead to uh, energy it will result into the energy and this energy will be utilized by the cf1 and result in the formation of ATP. 
CF not in CF one is the ATP synthase, the enzyme which is in result in the formation of ATP. Moving next is the dark reaction. Dark reaction we also call it as biosynthetic phase because why? Because there's a synthesis of carbohydrate takes place in this process. So all. C3 pathway, we also call it as Calvin cycle because the first scientist who observed this is Malvin Calvin. And in C3 pathway, in the Calvin cycle, all the products of the light reaction that is ATP and NDPH are utilized. So what happened? There's the RUBP and the enzyme. Most important, remember this point better. The enzyme involved in Calvin cycle is Rubisco. And when I, when I taught you biomolecules, I told you that the protein which is abundant in biosphere is Rubisco. Remember this. So Rubisco enzyme is a ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate carboxylase oxygenase. It has both carboxylase and oxygenase, oxygenase activity, but it has, more, it has more priority for carbon dioxide. Okay, so when the CO2 bind with RUBP, it forms 3PGA. It forms 3PGA, which is thi 3 phosphoglycerate, yeah, 3 phosphoglyceric acid. This process is known as carboxylation because the carbon dioxide is fixed and the enzyme which play a very important role in carboxylation is the Rubisco. The carboxylating enzyme is Rubisco. Remember this. Now this 3-phosphoglycerate will convert into triose phosphate or 3GP, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. And this process is reduction. And remember this point that in reduction, ATP is utilized and NADPH are utilized, which are the product of the light reaction. Very important, beta. remember this, that the product of the light reaction are utilized in the reduction process of Calvin's cycle. Okay? So in this case, there's a three molecule of CO2 are fixed. So six molecules of 3PGA are formed. Five molecules of 3PGA will, are in, will be involved in the regeneration of RUBP because we have to continue the cycle, right? We have to regenerate the RUBP. So five molecules of G3P will be involved in the regeneration of RUBP and the regeneration process involves ATP. Remember this process. Point beta reduction also involves ATP and regeneration process also involves ATP utilization. And the one molecule of 3PGA will be released. And you know that glucose is a six carbon molecule, right? So 3PGA will have only three carbon one, one, two, three. That means we have to fix a, another uh, three carbon dioxide to get a one molecule of glucose. That is why we are utilizing six carbon dioxide, 18 ATP and 12 NADPH. So when we are fixing the three carbon dioxide, what we are getting is six ATP. We are utilizing six ATP and six NADPH and three ATP in the regeneration. So total, we are utilizing 6 plus 9 ATP. And 6 NADPH, right? And if I, well, because we, are, we have fixed just 3 carbon. If I have to fix another 3 carbon, we have to, I have to multiply it with 2. So I will get 18 ATP and 12 NADPH. This is what this table is saying that 6 CO2, 18 ATP and 12 NADPH are utilized and form is one more molecule of glucose, 12 ADP and 12 NADP. I hope this is clear. Moving next is the hatch and slack pathway, which is a C4 pathway. 
first important point of C4 plant is they have Kranz anatomy. Okay, remember this point. They have Kranz anatomy. In C3 plants, you won't see the Kranz anatomy. Kranz anatomy is only present in the C4 plants where the vascular bundle is surrounded by the bundle sheet cells. And these bundle sheet cells, they are present in layers. And what the characteristics of these bundle sheet cells? Number one, they have a large number of chloroplasts. Number two, they have a thick wall. Very important. They have thick wall because of which the carbon dioxide, which is formed by the decarboxylation process in the bundle sheet cells cannot diffuse out. Because of that, there is a concentration of the carbon dioxide in the bundle sheet cells increases. That is why the, there is a, in C4 plant, there is no photorespiration. Remember this point, very important. And bundle sheet cells, they have no intercellular spaces and they show chloroplast dimorphism. Remember this, that C4 plants, there is a chloroplast dimorphism. Why? Because the chloroplasts which are present in mesophyll, they have grana. They have stacked of thylakoids. But the chloroplasts which are present in bundle sheet cells, they have unstacked thylakoids. They lack grana because the thylakoids, they are freely. They are not in stacked. They are lying freely. So there's a presence of unstacked thylakoid. That is why the C4 plants, they show chloroplast dimorphism. Okay. And why it is a C4? Because the first stable product is the 4-carbon, which is oxaloacetic acid. And in C3, it was 3-PGA. That is why it is a C3 pathway. In this, the carbon dioxide, the first primary acceptor is Phosphoenol pyruvate. In C3, it was RUBP. Here it is PEP. This process is carboxylation. And the enzyme which play a very important role is the PEP case or the phosphoenol pyruvate carboxylase enzyme. C4 acid, oxaloacetate is formed. Oxaloacetate will convert it to malate and then malate will move into the bundle sheet cells. And when the malate move into the bundle sheet cell, then decarboxylation will take place. Okay, CO2 will, will be released. And the C3 acid will transport back to the mesophyll cell. Okay, and this CO2 which is released is utilized in the Calvin cycle. Remember this point, very important. I'm going very fast better because we have very less time. Next one is photorespiration. Very important. We also call it as C2 cycle or C2 pathway. We also call it a glycolate pathway. These are the alternative names. And we also call it as, can anybody tell me what we call photorespiration, the another name of photorespiration is oxidative photosynthetic carbon cycle. Okay, remember these names. First thing what happens in photorespiration that RUBP binds with oxygen. In C Calvin cycle, whatever is happening, the RUBP is binding with carbon dioxide. But here, the RUBP binds with oxygen and the rubisco perform oxygenase activity. And because of the oxygenase activity, one molecule of phosphoglycerate and one molecule of phosphoglycolate is formed. That is why we call it as C2 pathway because glycolate is a two carbon compound. And three organelles are involved in photorespiration. There's chloroplast, mitochondria and peroxisome. Remember this point, beta, and very important point that sometimes it is asked that where the carbon dioxide release in photorespiration, in which organelle? Remember, it is mitochondria. Very important. Remember this, beta, and note this down. And in photorespiration, 
no atp is formed in this process no atp will be formed there is no fixation of carbon dioxide inside the carbon dioxide is released that is why we also call that the photorespiration is a wasteful process why because the, instead of fixing the carbon dioxide the carbon dioxide is released and atp is utilized and in we see photorespiration in c3 plants C4 plants they lack photorespiration. I told you why because they have a carbon dioxide. Con they have a carbon di. Uh, they in in bundle sheet cells the concentration of carbon dioxide is more because there's a decarboxylation process is taking place in bundle sheet cells, right? And the walls of the bundle sheet cells are impervious, so the carbon dioxide cannot diffuse out. So the carbon dioxide will remain in the bundle sheet cell. The concentration of the carbon dioxide in bundle sheet cells will be more. So rubisco present in the bundle sheet cells will perform with the carboxylase activity, right? That is why the C4 plants they lack photorespiration, and that is why the C3 differ from C4 plants because the C4 plants they lack photorespiration. Remember this point, very important. Moving next, this table very very important. I make this table so that it is easier for to for you to remember the Kranz anatomy present in C four, absent in C three. Carboxylating enzyme in C three is RUBP carboxylase. In C four plants in mesophyll, it is papkase, phosphoenol pyruvate carboxylase. In bundle sheet cells is Rubisco. Why? Because in bundle sheet cells Calvin cycle is taking place in mesophyll cell. The Calvin cycle is not taking place. Remember this point; very important. Initial CO two acceptor is RUBP in C three plants. In C four plant is this PEP. First stable products is three PGA. That is why the C three pathway is C three. We call it as C three because the first stable product is a three carbon compound. In C four, it is oxaloacetate, which is a four carbon compound. Optimum temperature for C3 is 15 to 25 degrees Celsius, and for C4 plants is 30 to 40 degrees Celsius. Why in C3 plant the optimum temperature is low? It's because, beta, in C3 plants there's a photorespiration, and photorespiration increases with increase in temperature because the rubisco oxygenase activity increases with increase in temperature. So as the temperature increases, the rubisco will show more oxygenase activity. So photorespiration will be more. The quantum yield then it will lead to the decrease in the quantum yield of the C3 plants. So C3 plants they prefer of very low optimum temperature, whereas in C4 plants they can have a very high optimum temperature because they lack photorespiration. Remember. The because of that Kranz anatomy because of the bundle sheet cells because they have a carbon dioxide concentrating mechanism. Carbon dioxide compensation point in C three is thirty to seventy. In C four it is zero to ten. C four plants have a very low carbon dioxide compensation point because they have the carbon dioxide concentrating mechanism. Photorespiration present in C three plants absent in C four plants. Remember this. Blackman's law of limiting factor. This law says that if a chemical process is affected by more than one factor, it could be a light, carbon dioxide, temperature, water, like the many factors are affecting the chemical process. That is photosynthesis. Okay, so the factor which is nearest to its minimum value, which is very low in concentration, that factor will be the Limiting factor. That factor will be the rate determining step of the reaction. Okay, so if I increase the concentration of this factor, the rate of the the rate of the reaction will also get changed or get affected. This is what the law of limiting factor says. Remember this graph. You also get the this question in the test. Remember this. So the x y axis shows the rate of photosynthesis and the x axis shows the light intensity. At point A, the light intensity is very low. Okay, low light intensity. So 
so if i increases the light in intensity the rate of the photosynthesis will also increase but up to a certain point the optimum point this is the point or the light intensity where the rate of photosynthesis is maximum after this if i keep on increasing the light intensity the rate of photosynthesis will not change there will be no effect on the rate of photosynthesis why because now the light is no more the limiting factor okay now the other factors have become limiting it could be a carbon dioxide it could be temperature it could be water now the other factors have become limiting so very important point remember this now let's come to question question one says the product of light reaction in photosynthesis are number 1 atp number 2 nadph number 3 o2 number 4th is oh sorry number 1 option 1 is atp nadph o2 and water number 2 is atp nadph water number 3 is atp nadph co2 number 4th is atp nadph and o2 what do you think what will be the correct option for this question try to remember the products of light reaction sunita ritu nisha vijay mohina photosynthesis consists of two reaction light reaction and the dark reaction light reaction cyclic photophosphorylation and non cyclic photophosphorylation try to recall what are the products of the light reactions very good ritu hijun is not one but in light reaction splitting of water takes place that is why the o2 is released let's for atp nadph and O two oxygen is evolved when the water split. The oxygen is evolved. Non-cyclic photophosphorylation. Remember, in non-cyclic photophosphorylation, two photo system are involved. One and two. Splitting of water takes place at photo system two. Okay, moving next. Which of the following pair of micronutrients would help in the light phase of photosynthesis? to help in the reaction leading to oxygen evolution oxygen evolution beta remember micronutrients hint number 2 option 1 says manganese and molybdenum option 2 says molybdenum and iron option 3 says manganese and chlorine option 4 says zinc and chlorine what do you think what will be the correct option for this question everybody in the chat box i told you this is a very very important question very good students you're doing a great job very good everybody yes it is number 3 it's magnesium and chlorine you remember that splitting of water occurs at photosystem 2 right and this splitting of water also accompanied by the oxygen evolving complex and this oxygen evolving complex consists of manganese chlorine bicarbonate iron and calcium remember these points moving next question 3 says in photosynthesis the light independent reaction takes place light independent reaction they take takes place as one stomatal matrix two thylakoid lumen third photosystem one fourth is photosystem two they asking about the light independent reaction independent hint quickly answer in the chat box photosynthesis light reaction and in photosynthesis the light independent reaction takes place at
it is a uh, cysteine thylakoid the light dependent reaction occurs nine non cyclic and cyclic photophosphorylation remember photophosphorylation that means they le they need light but the dark reaction which is taking place in the stroma the dark reaction is not directly dependent on light it is dependent on the products of the light reaction that is atp and nadph which are utilized in the reduction process of calvin cycle okay very good ritu i hope it is clear now so the light in photosynthesis the light independent reaction takes place at stomatal matrix moving next is an oxygenic photosynthesis is characteristics of an oxygenic this is also i told you the an oxygenic there are two type of photosynthesis it could be an oxygenic and oxygenic number one option says rhodospirulin number two says spirogyra number three says chlamydomonas and number four says alva what do you think what will be the correct option nisha mohina vijay what do you think what will be the correct option for this question an oxygenic an means oxygen is not going to evolve is not going to released an oxygenic without oxygen very good vijay rhodospirulum beta it's a bacteria the spirogyra chlamydomona alva they all are green algae and green algae will perform photosynthesis and they will perform oxygenic photosynthesis but in bacteria there will be an an oxygenic photosynthesis rhodospirulum is a purple non sulfur photosynthetic bacteria moving next the process which make major difference between c3 and c4 plants major difference option 1 says photorespiration option 2 says respiration option 3 says glycolysis and option 4 says calvin cycle what do you think what will be the correct option for this question the process which makes major difference between c3 and c4 plants is very easy question beta major difference in a calvin cycle occur in both c3 and c4 plants also in c4 plants in bunder sheath cells the calvin cycle takes place vijay remember the decarboxylation occur in c in c4 plants in the bunder sheath cell and that co2 which is released during the process of uh, decarboxylation is will be utilized in the calvin cycle the process which makes a major difference it is photo respiration photo respiration in c3 plants there's a photo respiration and in c4 plant there's no photo respiration okay so photo respiration is the major difference between c3 plants and c4 plants remember this point it's very important 
because in C4 plants, this is the mesophyll cell and this is a bundle sheet cells. Okay. So CO2 from the atmosphere will enter into the mesophyll cell combined with PEP. Enzyme which catalyze this reaction is PEP case, which is a phosphoenol pyruvate carboxylase. C4 acid is formed. This C4 acid will move into the Bundeshi cell. And when the C4 acid in the Bundeshi cells undergo decarboxylation process. So what will be released? In, during this decarboxylation process, CO2 is released and C3 acid is formed. C3 acid will move to the mesophyll cell for the regeneration. And this CO2 which is formed, this CO2 will enter into the Calvin cycle. Plant is called C4 plant. Why? Because they have, because the first stable product is a four carbon compound, which is oxaloacetate. That is why we call it as C4 plant. But the Calvin cycle also takes place in the C4 plants in the bundle sheet cell. Remember this. So rubisco is present in bundle sheet cells. In mesophyll cell, there's a pepcase is present. Remember these enzymes. These are very important. Okay, try to remember the table which I've shown you. Now it is clear. And that is, let me tell you one more point. Because the CO2 is formed during the decarboxylation process in Bundeshi cells, the walls of the Bundeshi cells are impervious. They are thick walled. They are thick walled, impervious wall, because of which, being impervious, the CO2 they cannot move out. And the CO2 cannot move out. So the concentration of CO2 will keep on increasing in the Bundeshi cell. That is why the rubisco, which is present in the Bundeshi cell, they perform carboxylase activity instead of oxygenase because in photorespiration the it was performing the oxygenase activity okay but here the rub the rubisco will perform the carboxylase activity because the high concentration of co2 in the bandage cell that is why that c4 plants they lack photorespiration i hope it is clear now vijay I have explained it in detail now. Now it's clear to everyone. 